Recall that in the quantum mechanical model of the atom, electrons are smeared out into weird shapes called orbitals. We saw in our last lesson how you can figure out just which orbitals an atom has with the electron configuration. In this lesson, we'll learn how to draw electron configurations really quickly using the periodic table. So now you can see our knowledge of the periodic table and our knowledge of the atom will come together to help us write these electron configurations quickly. Let's do that. So remember, electron configurations tell us how many electrons are in an orbital. And so if you look down here in the bottom right, you see that we have the name of the orbitals, 1s, 2s, 2p. And as a superscript, after 1s, 2s, and 2p, we have the number of electrons in that orbital. So we can see that in the 1s orbital, there's two electrons, which is full for an s orbital. And the 2s orbital, there's two electrons, also full. And the 2p orbital, there's three electrons, not quite full. So this turns out to be the electron configuration for nitrogen. And all that's saying is if you have nitrogen, you have two electrons in a 1s, two electrons in a 2s, and three electrons in a 2p. And what we're gonna do to use the periodic table as a trick to write these electron configurations more easily is we're gonna divide the periodic table up into the s block, the d block, the p block, and the f block. And so the s block is right here. It's the far left. And really it includes helium. So it really should include helium right here. And on the next slide, I've moved helium over there so that you know that helium is in the S block. And the D block's right in the center, the P block's over on the far right, and the F block is way down here at the bottom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these labels as kind of a guide to be able to write electron configurations. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Here I just have part of the periodic table so that we can display it in a larger format. So here's the trick. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move through the periodic table from left to right, from top to bottom, just like reading. So, and as we go through each box, we're gonna add an electron to our electron configuration. And the electron will go in the orbital that we've labeled the row as. So you can see here that in the S block, we've just counted down. We started in those two hydrogen and helium are gonna add one S electrons. Lithium and beryllium are gonna add two S electrons. And then as we go over to the 2p, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, those are all going to add electrons into the 2p. And then after we go through the 2p, we'll go through the 3s because we're going top to bottom, left to right. All right, let me show you what I mean with a practical example. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write the electron configuration for magnesium. This trick takes a few times practicing. Once you get it, it's really easy. The first time you see it looks a little confusing. We'll do a number of examples so you really make sure and get it by the end of this video. All right, so we wanna to go to magnesium. Notice that magnesium on our periodic table is right here. So we're gonna go all the way to magnesium and we're gonna go through the rows, top to bottom, left to right. And each time we go through a box, we're gonna add an electron. So we start up at the very top and first we cross into hydrogen. And when we get into the hydrogen box, that adds an electron into our 1s orbital. So we have the 1s orbital, the hydrogen adds one electron. And then as we cross into helium, that means we've added two electrons to our 1s orbital. So we rewrite 1s2 because we've passed through two boxes on that 1s row. Now, notice there's no 1p. So even if we were to go over here, we would run into nothing. And so we go into the next row, which is the 2s. Lithium add one's ele adds one electron to our 2s orbital. Beryllium adds another one. So now we've gone through our 2s row and we've added two electrons. So that means we should write 2s2. All right, now as we continue across, there is a 2p. So next we go to the 2p because we're going top to bottom, left to right. And that means as we pass through the boxes in the 2p, we're gonna add electrons. How many electrons are we gonna add to the 2p? Boron's one, carbon's two, nitrogen's three, oxygen's four, fluorine's five, and neon six. So that means we're gonna add six electrons to the 2p. So we write 2p six. So we continue now and we go to the 3s row because we're going top to bottom, left to right, and we're through the 2p, so now we go back down and we're gonna pass through sodium, that's gonna add one electron, and then we're gonna pass into magnesium. That's where we stop because that's the element we wanna get to. And so that means that magnesium has two electrons in the 3s orbital because we've passed through sodium and magnesium. 
And so that means the very last thing we write is 3s2. So that's the electron configuration for magnesium. It's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. And we've used the periodic table to do that. All we do is we read it top to bottom, left to right. Every time we cross into a box that adds an electron to our electron configuration. We know which orbital it's adding it to by the label we've put on these rows. All right, let's do another one. Here we see that we want to go to chlorine. And we'll notice that chlorine is all the way down here. So we want to go all the way till we get to this chlorine box that's right here. So we're going to start top to bottom, left to right, just like we did before. Now here's a tip. Last time I counted every single time we went through a box. But if you're passing through a whole row, that means that orbital's full. And remember that an s orbital can hold two electrons, a p orbital can hold six electrons, a d orbital can hold 10 electrons. So if we're passing through a full row, we just know that orbital's full, and we can add that number of electrons to the orbital, and that makes it a little quicker. And if you ever forget that, you can just count how many boxes you're going through. All right, so we start with the 1s. All right, so that means the 1s is full. We have 1s2, because we passed through two boxes. Then we go through the 2s. The 2s is also full, so we have 2s2. Then we go all the way across to the 2p. And we're going to go all the way through the 2p, because our chlorine isn't until the next row. And so if we've gone all the way through the 2p, how many electrons do we have there? Well, six, because that's the maximum number of electrons that can fit in a p orbital. It's also the number of boxes if we go from boron, boron to neon. So that means we have 2p6. Six. six up high for the number of electrons. Now we go to the next row. And now we see that we're in the 3s. We pass through two boxes. We pass through the whole row. That s orbital is also full. And it's the 3s orbital. It's the third row down. And then we go across once again to the 3p, and we're gonna stop once we get to chlorine. So we're gonna go all the way to chlorine, and then we're gonna stop. How many boxes did we pass through? Well, aluminum's one, silicon's two, phosphorus is three, sulfur's four, and chlorine's five. So we've passed through five of our six boxes in that row. That means there's five electrons in the 3p. So we write 3p5. All right. So that's the electron configuration for chlorine. And you can see that's a much easier way to write it than writing out some orbital diagram or something like that. All right, now we're going to do potassium. And potassium, we see, is K. That's the uh, symbol for potassium. And it's down here in the 4S. So we got the 4S right here. And that's where potassium is. So we're going to go all the way through them until we get down to the 4S. So first we go through the 1s. You can see that the electron configurations start out almost identically every time, right? So once you do this a few times, you just know what to write, right? We go through the 1s, so that gives us 1s2. Then we go through the 2s, so that gives us the 2s with two electrons in it. And then we go through 2p. We go all the way across it, so that means there's six electrons in the 2p. And then we go through the 3s. We get all the way through it. And that means there's two electrons there. We've gone across two boxes. Then we go to the 3p. We go all the way through it. So the 3p also has six electrons in it. All right, lastly, we go barely into the 4s. The 4s only passes through one box, or we only pass through one box in that 4s row. So that means there's only one electron there, 4s1. So our electron configuration for potassium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 4p6, 4s1. So we can write this a lot faster with the periodic table. All right, now we're going to do an example in the D block. We want to do cobalt. So cobalt's way down here in the D block, and that looks just a touch different. And right after this, we're going to do an example in the F block, then we'll be done. So we start once again with the 1s, and so that means our 1s is full, so we have 1s2. We go through the 2s, that means our 2s is full, 2s2. Then we go through the 2p, we go all the way through it, so that gives us 2p6. And then we go through the 3s. That's full, 3s2. Then we go all the way across to the 3p. We go all the way through that row. Our element's not there yet. And so that gives us 3p6. Then we go through the 4s. And it's full. Now, next we go into the d orbital. Notice that the d starts with a 3. And that has to do with the restrictions on quantum numbers that you may have learned about before. If you haven't learned about those, don't worry about it. 
but it starts at three. So that's something you have to remember when you use the periodic table. Don't ever put 1D or 2D, those don't exist. And we're gonna pass all the way through to cobalt. Once we get into cobalt, we stop. So how many boxes have we passed through? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven electrons and that 3D. So that's the electron configuration for cobalt. We've passed through all those boxes getting up to cobalt and we filled in all of those orbitals. Remember the S starts at 1S, the P block starts at 2P, the D block starts at 3D, and you guessed it, the F block starts at 4F. So now you can see this is a giant blown up periodic table. What if we wanna go all the way to europium? Well, that's a really long way down, right? So what I'm gonna do is show you a bit about how that's gonna work. We're gonna cross through hydrogen and helium. So that's gonna fill the 1S. Then we're gonna fill the 2S, then the 2P, then the 3S, then the 3P, then the 4S, then the 3D, which is all the way full, then the, the 4P, 5S, 4D. Now, if you're getting confused about what rows which, which sometimes happens to me, I just go ahead and write down next to the lines on the periodic table what this is. This is particularly useful to do on a test and that helps you keep track. So we've gone all the way through the 4D. And then remember that since we start at 2P and then that's 3P, this is four, this is five, this is six, and so forth. So now we're going through the 5P and that's all the way full. Then we're gonna go through the 6S, that's the sixth row down. And we're gonna go all the way now. You can see there's this little star here, which says 57 through 70 there. And 57 through 70 refers to the atomic numbers down here. So really, if you looked at the periodic table correctly, this whole line should go up between it. And so that's why after we go through that 6S, we go right into the 4F. And if we go into the 4F, then we go all the way to europium right here. So you can see all the boxes we've gone through. I'm gonna leave it to you to write down what that electron configuration would be. But remember, after you go through the 6D, you go right into that 4F block and you write how many electrons are there. As you can imagine, this gets to be a very long electron configuration and that's problematic. So what we do with really long electron configurations is we use something called the noble gas configuration and that's a shortcut a better way, an abbreviation rather, of writing our electron configurations. So go ahead and check out my video on noble gas configurations, and there you'll learn how to write these guys in a shorter manner. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, ask them below, or any comments, you can leave those too. Please subscribe to receive updates about future videos. Hey, hey.